heard of once in a while. Okay, that's good. Um, so we, one of the big things about Clemson Life, uh, we do try, we're trying to get the word out. The program's been around for about seven years. Um, it started off with five students, and I'm about to show you the growth that we have had, and we have long-term goals coming up. Um, so it's exciting as we're able to go out and share to the community. We're still sharing to students on campus. I mean, I, I have met with the intro to special ed courses last week students on campus who have no idea about our program and they're in the education department so it's very important for us to get that word out um, just you know for different ways to know for Clemson Life itself we are not supported by the university which is something a lot of people don't know we are um, privately funded just through donors who are very generous and um, through as our program operation goes through students you know applying and becoming participants in the program. You want to do the drama for us? Okay. So right now, I said we start off with five. Right now, we have 23 students. Um, we Students in ages range between 18 and 26. Uh, some students will come in at 18, like right when they finish, they graduate right then. Some will stay until they're 21 in school systems and then apply. We always have open houses twice a year, one is actually in two weeks. And so a lot of times we recommend that when students come, they, if they're 18, still apply because we don't always have a lot of openings. And so if you are put on the waiting list, you can go back to school for another year and then a spot happens to open or they can come back in for the following year. So that's kind of the way we work that with the 18 to 21 year olds. Our main goal when students leave us is two things, employment and independent living. So as I talk about the program and all the things we work on, just keep in mind, those are our two goals. So we work on different skills, employment skills, functional living skills, um, functional academics, and so it's all very functional, social, adaptive skills, so that when they leave us, those two goals. I want them to live on their own. I do not want them to go back home and live with mom. After two or four years with us to go back, that, that kind of negates everything we've worked on. And then we want them to have sustain a job so that they can pay for their independent living. So everything we work on focuses on that. So like I said, 23 students. And you can see we have a good little pyramid going here. You start with your freshman at the bottom. It's 10 and then 8 and then 3 and 2. And, our program itself, as we're expanding, we're hoping by 2020 to have 40 students. So that will be our max. But we had to build some foundation in our department before we could even think about getting to the 40 students. We have basically two programs. We have a basic program and we have an advanced program. So I really I get excited to say we have an AP program and I'm like, you're AP students? And their parents get very excited about that part. But um, so our basic program is where they're living on campus. And I'll go into the, in the depth of the things they work on. The advanced program, they have to be invited back. So they have to meet certain milestones and show us certain skills that they have attained Safety is a key component of that, um, so that they can then, on the second, final two years, the advanced program, they live off campus. So there's a big difference to so taking the, everything in the basic program is your foundation, and then they apply all those skills in the advanced program. Um, right now we have pretty good percentages, but there's always room for growth for us. Um, so these are from graduates. So students have been graduated from our program. It has just recently moved to the four-year, the advanced program. It's fairly new. So this is from any student who has graduated. Be it they graduated after two years or four years. So employment rate, when they leave us, 81% of them have um, employment with, you know, it's decent paying. They are able to sustain their lifestyle of living. And then the independent living is 43. Now, if you could only imagine when students leave us, it's usually easier for them to get some form of job. Parents will take them to their job. They'll, they'll make sure they can get there. But when you think about them living in an apartment somewhere by themselves, they have a hard time letting go. And so a lot of times, transportation is another component that's very challenging for our students. 
Um, we have a couple students who have graduated in their home because they don't have a way, because they don't drive for us, so they don't have a way to get from home to work. So the parents are like, well, they're with me, I take them. And so you can see the, the trouble we have on the independent living part. We're really trying to reach out and looking into the concept of adding some transportation issues, or not issues, but transportation support for when they leave us. Clemson's a small town, so it's really easy for us to utilize the local cat bus and the local transportation, and, and they love it. And then they don't want to leave when they graduate. And everybody wants them to stay because the community's just really taking them in. I mean, they get good jobs there, they have an apartment that they've lived in, they can transport wherever they need to, so why don't we go back home? Well, we have more students coming through. And so we want to keep this cycle going. So now we're getting ready to add the component of a transition coordinator. So when they leave and they're getting ready to graduate, let's we'll say they graduate this next May. In January, Melissa, who's our coordinator, our employment coordinator, and then we have a transition coordinator, they will work with the families in their community. So if they need to go back to Mount Pleasant, they're going to be contacting Mount Pleasant looking for resources, looking for employment, looking for transportation, looking for living situations, trying to set them up to be successful once they leave us. Um, now I know you can't read these names and it's not meant for you to read. I just want you to see for 23 students, this is what it's taking to run our program right now. Um, last year, there, there wasn't any, any of this. They had two teachers and then they had a coordinator and a director. So to think where we've come to be able to have some PhD students in there, we've added employment, we're adding transition. So we are definitely increasing our base so that we can support and expand our program. So our class is very, very, very functional. And as we're talking about this, if you're thinking of people like, oh, this is, this is what they need, this is what they can be doing, what can I do to help them? We get that question a lot. How can I prepare them? And I tell people, it's never too early to start. But these are some of the functional skills that we work on, again, for those two goals, independent living and employment. So functional math, the literacy, living skills, social and self-advocacy. That was really big. I had a student presenting with me the other night. And he stood right up and said his name. He was like, my disability is this. And so when I go to work, I need help with this. And I was like, Oh, he did it, you know. And, and so I was telling the students, I was like, I mean, we worked a year for him to be able to stand up and say that and to get it. And that's what we want because if he goes to work and he needs some task analysis or something broken down, we want him to be able to do that. We don't want Melissa to have to go out there and tell him. So that was great. That's a huge thing for us. So it goes down all the way to the technology, which is really embedded in everything that we do. So we take things, they're learning them in class, and then we make them hands-on. Because for our students, it's great to learn it on a book or in paper, but actual concrete putting it to task is what they need. So like Bank of America, that's who we use. Um, they go in there, they go to the bank, they open their accounts. They are constantly in the apps on Bank of America, going back and forth, so it's all hands-on. Apartment classes, they work on a variety of things, and it could be the basics of you know making your bed, picking your things up, to what, do you, what cleaning material or cleaning product are you using to clean your tub? Um, how, and that goes into the cooking component. We work with other, uh, other schools in the university, and they come out and work with our students. Cooking healthy meals, they go from planning a healthy meal to going grocery shopping, cooking it, cleaning it, the whole shebang. So they could sit there and listen to us talk about it, or they really do it. So the hands-on we found is what they need. Um, exercise or job internships, we're going to go into that, that shortly. Um, exercise classes is one of the big things we have our students is the fitness. And I mean, it's no secret that a lot of students with intellectual disabilities are obese. And so we really focus on, with the food science and nutrition classes, healthy meals along with workout plans they need for our students. They work out three times a week. Plus, they just started a new special Olympic swim team. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the Tiger Sharks, they love it. And um, I mean, it's, it's, they're serious about their swimming too. Um, so it, the exercise component is a huge thing for us to keep that going. And um, 
field trips or any of the events. Like if they're talking about tipping, and some kids can just do the math. Great. Some kids need the app where they put the amount in and it comes up for them. We've talked about it. Okay, we're going to go to a local restaurant and everybody's going to do it. And you put them in that position where they have to do it. So they enjoy their field trips. I mean, they're fun, but they don't realize we're making them fly when we're working. And they are very, very, very social. Busy students. They are constantly, you know, just being involved in, if it's any sporting event, we have a lot of groups that reach out and want to do field days, just fun activities. They do tailgates for us and just anything to keep the students integrated, <coughs> that is key for us. Um, they do participate in a traditional Clemson University course. This is how they are a Clemson University student. So they do leisure skills courses. And this is where I usually have the student talk because they love to talk about their favorite one. Um, dancing is a big one this semester. So we had some dance moves the other night, and they, they love them. They, hip hop's cute. Um, but they do get involved in the yoga and the Pilates and um, just rock climbing, tennis, whatever they can do, they get to choose that activity. They get to be paired with whomever they want to in that course. And that's really good for them. It's good for the rest of the university students to see our students in class right there with them. They have the same expectations as any other student. So this week was midterm. <coughs> we were all taking midterms this week. <laughs> we never, I mean, they had them. They had the midterms. They had. We want them to have the same expectations when it comes to their leisure skill courses. And this is Dylan, and he's going to share about his bowling leisure skill class. We have a bowling class on Thursdays and Tuesdays. And we come here to get our bowling shoes and get our bowling ball and then we go to games. I like to walk out this to meet new people and have fun. My best game was the well, I, I had a lot of best games. <laughs> I bowled one strike. We did teams because we were the teams. That was the end of bowling. Two teams. So they put a lot of new people to see who was when. So they do get to do a variety. Bowling tends to be the first thing that a lot of freshmen like to do because it's one of those success type sports they can get in and, and they go. And so um, that's where we do that. Um, I'm going to let them, Melissa share a little bit about employment with you guys. Hey. Hi, I'm Liz Cassidy. Um, if I look familiar, I actually used to work for Goodwill Industries. Shout out to Goodwill, really excited to see him here. Um, but I do work in all aspects of employment for the Clemson Life Program. And really that starts when the students are coming in as freshmen and they're learning those foundational soft skills that are going to help them go into the employment environment in, with the right foot forward. Um, a lot of employers, whether I was at Goodwill or I'm at Clemson Life or I'm with a previous employer, they're saying that the skills that any person is lacking coming into that job environment are soft skills. So it's very important to me to give them a great foundation to get started. After that, as they transition into the spring semester of their freshman year and then into the spring semester of their sophomore year, they're participating in um, internships, typically on campus. Um, we partner with the, well you just saw Dylan, he's actually working with Clemson Broadcasting this year, and he is, he's filming for them, which is the coolest thing in the world, it's, he, it's like he won the lottery, he's so happy, um, but he's actually learning real skills that he can use, he's editing a video for Homecoming right now, and it's really cool. Um, we also work with the library, but things that they're actually learning, transferable skills, because <coughs> After they finish the really into the fall, if not earlier, of their sophomore year, we're looking at paid employment for them because we want to see if there's someone we could consider for the advanced placement program. Um, so we're transitioning in, them into paid employment in the surrounding community. We've got great partners. Publix for One is a great partner that we work with. We also work with local businesses. They're extremely supportive of our program, but they also benefit from the work that our students provide them because my goal with all my students is that an employer hire them, not hug them. Um, because if they're doing a favor by hiring the individual, they're going to hurt their bottom line. And we don't want to set that example in the community. Um, so we've got students that work and then they even transition. If they're invited back to the third and fourth year, 
you're required to work a minimum of 25 hours a week. And with all five of our AP students that we currently have, all five of them are gainfully employed. And one young lady is actually working at the Walmart neighborhood market. I think the girl can run a cash register faster than anybody I've ever seen, neurotypical or otherwise. Uh, but she's awesome and actually is working full time and able to pay all her bills and be independent. <coughs> uh, the, let me see if I'm missing anything. That's pretty much it. When it comes to employment, we feel like if students are coming into our program, that they really have to want to work. It can't be like a just fun thing. So we try to teach them the reality of working, um, but we also try to make it a little fun too. That's important. Oh, here's where some of our locations. All the ones with the dollar signs are actually paid employment for our students. Uh, which is nice because some of our sophomores, if I'm noticing that a sophomore is kind of bored in their internship, it's, you know, they're finishing their tasks really quickly, then we start looking at paid employment for them, even if it's fall semester. And we get them into a paid job, it's going to challenge them a little more and really set a higher expectation for them. One thing I forgot to mention are on campus, um, we actually have, in addition to our employment internships, we have athletic management internships. So if you've ever seen a young man who works for the Clemson football team, Davidsonville, he's actually one of our graduates. Um, but we also work with the Rally Cats, the Spirit Squad, men's basketball, women's basketball, rugby. Actually, two of our students went to the National Rugby Championships this summer. And that's what But I will turn it over. Yes, like Melissa was saying, the, every student comes in. Have y'all heard of, who's heard of David, her cousin? But David has like his own YouTube channel. He's, he's very serious. And if you ever, he is on the field every game out there hugging, high-fiving, and doing his walk. I mean, he's serious about his job. And he was one of the ones, when students come in, they all want to be him. And we're like, gosh, you know, it's not really an opportunity right now. And, and so we actually had so many students asking to be athletic managers that we had to make that an extracurricular thing because we wanted them to realize it's like everybody wants to be the athlete. They're going to be that star football player. Well, that doesn't happen to everybody. David was an unusual case that where he was hired on full-time by Dabo, but that's because Dabo was really nice and did that. That's not always going to happen. So we want them to focus on the employment aspect. Managing your sports is an extracurricular thing. So that was that's new this year, to, that drive. Like they all wanted it. It was pretty crazy. Um, so independent living. So I talked about the two programs. Our, this, is going, this is about our basic program. This is where they live on campus. So they actually live in the nicer apartments, which I did not realize that. I didn't live on campus at Clemson, so these are pretty impressive, though. Um, so they're four-bedroom apartments. They share a common area, the kitchen, and then they have the two bathrooms. In these four bedrooms, three are Clemson Life students. One is an ILA, or an independent living assistant, very similar to an RA. However, they do a lot more than an RA would do. They are on duty from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. They are there just in case. They're not mom and they're not dad, and we, we push that very much so. They're more like that big brother, big sister thing. Um, if we worked on cleaning the bathtub at home or in class, we communicate with them, hey, this is what they're going to be working on tonight. Just make sure they grab the right chemical, like if they struggle with that or something. So we want to follow up. So there's a lot of communication between this ILA and our instructors to make sure we're all looking at the same thing. The students know that we're together, and they are able to apply the skills we've been working on. The ILA is a traditional Clemson student um, for all different majors. We have right now, I think we have finance, special ed. We had an engineer last year, um, and then a couple educations. So we definitely are, we're not biased to just the education. We like to spread the love out there. Um, but they, that is just a, I would almost say like a security blanket for parents. A lot of parents <laughs> like that fact about Clemson Life. Um, there are actually five different post-secondary transition programs like ours in the state. And that is the component that makes Clemson Life different than all the others. Um, the others do not have an independent living assistant living with them, specifically to work on these independent living skills. So that's what makes us different. 
So what do the, what do they have? What do the other ones have? They live in a dorm just like everybody else. So like Winthrop I mean, or College of Charleston. Or yeah, so Coastal College of Charleston, Coastal, Winthrop, and Carolina Life at USC. And their students come in and they live in a dorm just Fully as independent. Correct. Yeah. And, um, and that is great, and we've had some students come in, who the parents have come and they met with me and we've spoken, and they may not need these skills because they've worked on them so intently, and that's great. And they may, may need a little less support than what we give, and so I will say, hey, you may want to look at some of these other programs. We, and then the same thing, I was just talking to um, College of Charleston, and she was like, do you mind if I send some people to you? And I'm like, no, and so we've kind of gotten this collaboration working together, now that we're all starting to get a little consistent with our staffing, um, we work together so we can look at the student levels, the support they're needing, send them to each other. Yes? And then outside the state, there are other programs besides the five. What's more common, the ILAs or the non-ILAs? Um, oh, so there's about 250 across the nation programs. And thinkcollege.net is the site to go to and I pull people in and you literally can put in the state you want to consider, two year or four year, um, on campus, off campus, start in high school or start after you graduate. And you put all these things in and it pops you, list, puts a list of the schools. Um, what I have been told and I have not researched it myself, but we are one of the only very few that do the ILAs. That's okay. not a common thing. It's not a common thing. No. More, more common to be in the dorm. Correct. And um, again, that's just part of Clumps and Life. That's kind of our niche. We wanted to have a little niche. And one is we wanted um, to be able to serve students that need a little more support. That's really it. Um, the other thing that is a little different from us is our students really focus heavy on functional skills for those two reasons, independent living and employment, where at some other programs, students are more integrated into the traditional program. So, and that's great. That is perfect for some students. Mm -hmm. And for our students, we want to be able to make sure that they can live on their own and can sustain employment. So it's just that's just the difference on the desire that the families want. Do you have a requirement for prerequisite skills or ability levels? We like to consider. So our requirements are they do have to have an intellectual disability, and we have a wide range. I mean, we've had some with 40, 42, and we've had some right there at 69. I mean, we have the range. Um, we like them to be second to third grade, but I will say we've gotten some students in who were at midterms, what is that, week six, I think we're in, and we are really excited because they just were able to log themselves into their email account. We have some who don't know their letters and numbers. Um, and then we have some, I think, could teach our class. So we definitely have a wide range, and um, that's that's been, I, I don't know past years, but I feel like this year has been a really large gap. <coughs> we have that large of a gap, then how do you make a discerning factor on who gets in and who doesn't get in? So when we're looking through that, so we have an application process that fill out the application. They, um, the first thing I look for is the um, ID. That's the very first thing. Then they also, we do interviews with them. They have to have references. Mm -hmm. I think references are huge for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want a reference from mom and aunt and the brother. Mm -hmm. um, I ask them to try to send one from some form of employment. Some will say, well, we volunteer. Perfect. Anybody that shows that you've been in the community, that's a great reference. The other one is typically if they've been involved with folk rehab, that's a good reference. Or in the schools when they're going out and doing some public working at that point in time, we use those references. Um, so reference are huge for us. That tells us a lot um, if they're involved in scouts or anything to that point. So we like to see employment. We like to see volunteering. Not that those aren't, none of, none of this is an exact thing. Like I look at the whole child. I mean, that's, we're looking at a big picture here. Um, so we're employment, the participating in any kind of like community outreach, they do have the ID, they have references that come in, we start narrowing down to that. So we, like last year we had 11 spots. We got over 50 applicants. Right. We end up doing a little over 20 something interviews. So we sit down and we have an interview process where we actually, everybody comes in and then we send 
family out, and it's just the student and us. And we talk with them for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then we do a ranking on that and then go through. Do we have any more questions for Eric? Or we're going to need to wrap up soon so okay. we can pass it on to Meyer Center. But um, unless you've got just like a minute that you can wrap up. I mean, up. hold on. There is something you have to see is this. Graduation. And then I'll be done. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so we do a lot more stuff. But um, so I do want to say, so we've always had a Clemson Life graduation. And last year, we were doing the graduation. President participates. The dean participates. And um, families come in. And if any of you are Clemson graduates, you know about the Clemson ring that you get when you graduate. And so, does anybody have one on? No? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so anyway, they get the Clemson ring. Well, we had a company that makes rings make life rings. And so they took the Clemson ring with the seal and the C and made it an L. So it was really amazing. And so they were presented with those. And then President Clement stood up and he was doing his little spiel and then said, and from now on, we will have a regular tradition to where these life students will be graduating with their traditional Clemson University. So they had their graduation because they all speak, and then they all got to walk across stage with in Little John with the full graduates, and it was a it was a tear fest. It was crazy. Um, but this is a video clip that is from actually our life present, our <coughs> graduation, and I wanted you to see that because it gives you a little bit of parent perspective speaking on here, and then ILAs and then mentors. So I just want. To My name is Ray Ward. Welcome to Chelton Hall for the class of 2015 graduation. Chelton Life has made up very many moving parts, and as everybody knows, things run smoothly and you have to work together. Our instructors and our graduate assistants, they keep us moving. It's been amazing. And this day in particular has been the waterworks. Um, Seeing the students change over the last two years and grow and become super independent, it's been emotional, but it's also been really rewarding for myself and them. My experience with Clemson Life has been everything the Tech Board has a chance to try. They get to participate in what college kids do in college. They go to football games, basketball games. They eat together. They, you know, they giggle together. They watch TV together. They do everything that everybody else in college does. Clemson has made it possible for these kids. You've taught your uh, mentors that being different is an opportunity. And I think you've taught us all that fitting in is overrated. I have learned how to be independent and live on my own. It has not been easy at first, but I have tried very hard uh, to learn to deal with that. Here at Clemson Life, we take lots of classes. We take math, transition, employment, and disability awareness. I was so excited when I got to the Clemson Life program. I have many jobs during my past four years. Now I'm working at Firehouse Hubs. I have been working there for two years. And I'm excited to say when I go home, I'll be working at the Children's Museum. On the weekends, and um, we eat nice out. We go to your football games and we have to go together to an after that. We start with the skits. We start acting at the time of show. We dance and have dance parties on Saturday night. I think anything's possible. That's what it teaches you. Anything's possible. My boss here, I started working with a cruising a football team. This ain't the Equipment, a manager. I have worked in four years. I have learned how to do work and be on time and take why and everything I do. I see them impacted a lot. Um, I see them by the end in that one student, I see them reaching out to another. And I feel like I am reaching the world through them. And I, I think that is a great thing. Um, not that everything I do is right, but I think that 
for some, it's better for them and it's better, you know, to make this world better. Thank you. And I can answer some questions.